Good evening, one and all. Basically, what we are going to study today is the cell structure and function. As the name indicates, we are going to study about cell today. Now, we need to remember that all bodies are made up of cells. So, cell is the basic unit of structure, it is the basic unit of function, and all cells they arise from pre existing cell. These three sentences is what forms the cell theory, which was given by M.J. Schleden and Theodore Schwann in the year 1839. But cell itself was discovered by Robert Hill in the year 1665. Now we need to remember that the cells, which are similar in size and shape and structure, they are grouped together and they form what is known as a tissue. The tissues, they form what is known as an organ. An organ is what forms the organ system and the organ systems are what forms the organisms. A very simple way to remember this is basically that cell can be compared to the brick of a house and these bricks, they combine together to form what is known as a wall or the tissue. Now these tissues or the wall basically are what is making a room and the room with all the stuff in it which is a functional room, maybe a kitchen or a bedroom is what forms a house which is known as the organism. Now coming to this, we need to remember that based upon the cells, if the organism has got only one cell, it is known as a unicellular organism. If the cell or the or many cells are there, then it is known as a multicellular organism. Just remember children that uni means one, so it is unicellular organism and multi, M for many. So this is what means the multicellular organism. A very good example of the unicellular organism is an amoeba. Now, we need to remember, although it's a single cell, but it performs all the life functions, which may be respiration, excretion, or metabolism, or even reproduction, and respond to stimuli. And however, there may be organisms like us human beings, plants and animals, which are made up of many, many cells. We need to remember that these cells may be of different sizes. Those which are the smallest are PPLO, pleuronemono like organisms, which is point one mu n that is millimicrons and then there are the ostrich egg cells which are very big it is a single cell but it is 107 millimeter in size so it is the biggest cell the cells they also vary in their shape and which depends upon where they are located and what is the function that they are performing for example in case of a nerve cell which is also known as the neuron the shape is branched and the reason is that it has to carry the messages these messages are basically being transported like a relay race in the body. It carries the message to the brain, the brain interprets it, and we are able to see, we are able to walk, we are able to move or respond to the stimulus. Now what is actually happening is the location and the function decides its shape. It is branched. Just like, for example, we switch on the electric switch and the bulb lights somewhere. How did the message go there? It went there in the form of an electric current, saying that this is an electric impulse. So this is basically a nerve cell or a neuron. Depending upon the cell, now in plants and animals, there are different types of cells. For example, in case of the animal, the cells are like this. And in case of the plants, the cells are like this. This is a living membrane, which is known as a plasma membrane. This, however, in case of the plant cells, this is a non-living membrane which is known as the cell wall. Wall is always dead. We need to remember membrane is something which is living. Now if we go by the spellings of the plasma membrane, the first two letters P and L is what is the constitution of the plasma membrane. For example, this is the proteins and this is the lipids. And if we go by the spellings of the cell wall, it is C-E-L-L-W-A-L-L. -L -L. So many L are there. And it is also made up of a component which is known as a cellulose. Again, so many L. So we can easily correlate and we can learn it and never forget it. Now, some there are many small structures in this which are known as the organelles. This is the nucleus. This is the cytoplasm. And the nucleus is here also. This is the nuclear membrane, nucleolus, nucleolus, small thread-like structures which are known as the chromosomes. And these chromosomes are those which are responsible for carrying the hereditary features from the parents to the offspring. Now there are other structures also like the mitochondria which actually gives the energy. So this is the mitochondria. In this case there are certain plastids which may be the chloroplasts. And there are small structures which are also known as lysosomes. They clear the debris in the cells or the useless material in the cell is cleared by these. Another thing 
is the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is the stacks and the main function is synthesis and storage. Now there are other structures which are road-like or we can say like a passage. These are the endoplasmic reticulum mainly of two types that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough as the name indicates R from R remember ribosomes. These are the structures which are present on the rough endoplasmic reticulum and not present in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mainly concerned with the protein synthesis. Now, last thing we need to remember is that these organelles have a membrane and that is why these kind of cells with the membrane organelles are known as eukaryotes. But in certain case of certain bacteria, these membranes are missing and they are known as the prokaryotes. P for prokaryotes, P for primitive. PR, PR. So I hope children, you have understood the structure and the function of the cells. Thank you so much.